Hi everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove. Thank you for joining me today. I wanted to walk you through the uh, third installment of uh, how to design your own digital paper for your journals. So this is the third video. Uh, in the first video we did the um, leaves here. The second video we did the dragonfly. So for the third video I want to I want to draw some berries and introduce it to this paper. So let's get started on that. We're gonna repeat a lot of the processes we've used in that paper. Uh, we're gonna start with a new page here. So 11 by 8.5, which is your standard size printer. Uh, I'd like to rotate it on the side. It's just a little bit easier for me to draw since I can't move the iPad while I'm uh, showing you guys. So I wanna uh, start with some berries. So I'm gonna go with a nice, a nice bright red, uh, more towards the orange than the pink. Let's uh, pick this red here. That's a pretty red, which I think I had selected already. There we go. And then I'm gonna go into my pencil and I'm gonna take my inking and my untitled brush and I'm gonna move my um, width of the pen to about that size there, not too big. And I'm gonna draw some circles. So I'm gonna just draw a circle like this and hold it and the program will turn it into a circle for me. I'm gonna drag that color over and fill it. So we're gonna draw these berries pretty big, um, just because we're gonna shrink them down. And I wanted to draw them bigger so that I can show you a little bit of the detail on the blending. So say if you wanted to do an apple or blueberries or something, you, you can take the same approach and uh, apply it to different different fruits and things like that. So I have a couple of circles drawn. Now I wanna make them a little more sphere spherical. So I'm gonna add uh, different colors. So I'm gonna work with a darker red and drag my color down. I'm gonna put the shading color in. So actually I'm gonna switch now over to my airbrush and I use the soft brush and I go over here and I make it just a little bit bigger. So again, once you start playing with this program, you're gonna find the brushes and things that you like best to use. I'm just gonna put in, these are my favorites. I like the airbrush and I like this blending tool, smudging tool that we're gonna to use today because I feel like I'm actually coloring, which I had mentioned in previous videos. So I'm gonna move this up to a light pink now. And I'm gonna put more of a highlight color in the top. So my light source is coming from this angle here. And the, so the shadow will be casted at the bottom of the berries and the light at the top of the berries. So let's go in and blend this. I'm just gonna do a real subtle blend. I wanna go, even if I go outside my original lines, that's okay, because we can clean them up. I wanna get uh, all the colors nicely blended together here. I'll try and blow this up for you guys. And what, that's what I love about this um, smudging tool because it does look like you're painting. It has that real hand painted look to it. And I don't know if it's gonna really show up on our page because we are gonna shrink these berries right down. But we know that the detail's there. And if we decided to use them in another project where we can blow the berries up, we know we've got a nice painted looking image to use even close up. So I find my berries a little bit more purple. I want them a little bit more red. So I'm gonna go into my color wheel again. I'm gonna select more of a red color. Let's see here, something like this maybe. And I'm gonna put, go to my paint tool and I'm just gonna rub in a little bit more red. So I do want the bright, vivid red color. I'm just gonna smudge that out now. You're either gonna like this blending smudge tool or you're not. <laughs> it's, um, sometimes it can be a little bit frustrating because it doesn't smudge exactly how you want it. But the more you work with it, the, um, the more familiar you get with it, and then the more effective it becomes. Just do this berry here. It's probably gonna put one more little highlight in here. So let's go back to the color wheel and let's go into more of a lighter 
pinky color. That's gonna throw a little bit of that in here. I want to I want the contrast there, but I want it to be subtle. Berries have this nice shiny kind of uh, texture with the colors do kind of blend subtly on their flesh of the berry. Leaves kind of a muddled looking texture. So I'm just going to go into my eraser and I'm just going to clean up these little edges here where I went outside the lines. I'm going to try and make it circular again. And you will need the eye pen, uh, sorry, eye pencil for this project. You won't be able to get this kind of control with your finger. It's worth the investment if you're going to use this program, this tool. Okay, so there's some berries. So we're going to now add another layer. So I'm going to click on the layer button. I'm going to press the plus button. Now I've got a new layer. I'm going to go into my color wheel. And I'm going to go into the green here that's already selected. You can take any green. I'm going to slide it down to a dark green. Go into my uh, tool, my drawing tool. I'm going to go back to inking the untitled brush that I always use. And I'm going to slide it right down so I have a very thin line to work with. And I'm going to draw the stems. So I'm going to put some stems in my berries. I think I'll thicken that line up just a wee bit. Go back in. And I'm gonna put this here, put this here. And while I have it, I think I'll do the, some highlighting and some leaves. Oops. There we go. So let's draw some leaves. So here's a leaf here connect it, make sure it's connected, and fill. Another leaf here, connect it, and fill. Oops, and fill. So the same process we did in the other leaves, we're gonna go to a lighter color, and I'll link those videos below. And uh, hopefully you can follow along and give it a try. And this paper that we're designing is, this is just, you know, my ideas, but when you're designing your own, once you've figured out how to use some of these tools, um, you can design any kind of element you want, really. Any theme, and they're all gonna be unique because nobody else is gonna have paper like you because it's all your designs. And then one day I'd like to figure out how to make a digital kit out of these and share them, but that I have yet to learn. So if anybody knows how or can suggest anything, please let me know. Because I would like to, uh, I'd like to learn how to do that next. So I'm just gonna use that same light green, narrow down my line, and now I'm just going to put a little bit of a highlight in my stem. At least I think I am. Why is it not working? Hmm. Sometimes this program freezes on me. There we go. Don't know what I did different, but I've had it freeze on me before. I think it's just uh, too much data maybe. There we go. I'm gonna go into my smudge tool. I'm gonna go very fine on my smudge tool and just soften that out a bit. And you can see, you can really blow this up. I mean, the detail you can put in these things is amazing. And we're gonna shrink these down, so we're not gonna be able to see all this detail anyways. But it doesn't hurt to blow it up and put that kind of effort in. I'm gonna uh, just clean it up a little bit with my eraser, hit on the eraser button. And you can see I can go right over top of the berry and it won't touch the berry because the berry is in a different layer, so it's protected. So the more familiar you get with playing with these layers, the more versatile the program gets because it, it really does um, make things possible that you couldn't do if you weren't using a pen and paper kind of thing. And you'll learn you'll you'll learn quick little shortcuts as I've slowly learned. Sorry if my hand's in the way there. There we go. 
oops, took too much off there. Undo. Don't want to thin it out too much. Let's clean up these edges from the smudging. Yeah, with this tool, I've learned to look at positive and negative spaces on these papers in a different way when it comes to using this eraser. It uh, makes you think outside the box a little bit, which is nice. It's nice to try different mediums and see what you're capable of. There we go. I'm just going to put a little bit of that line back in. I feel like I erased too much. There. So while we have the leaves in front, we're gonna now put the veining in. So I'm gonna go to a very, very light green, almost a white with a tint of green. And I'm gonna pull my pencil way, way down small. And I do a very fine line with some veining. Like I said, you can really get into detail if you want. And keep this relatively simple. More veining. A little highlight on the stem. And rotate it this way so it's a little bit easier on my wrist. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to tell this to put the leaves in the back so now they're behind. So I'm going to build a new layer. I want to put this layer on the top so I can see better what I'm doing. I'm going to go and put some berries behind everything. So now I want to go back to my reds, which are here. So you can see it keeps a memory. Whoops. It will keep a memory of so many colors. And uh, there is a way to uh, create uh, your palettes where you can add um, a memory to a palette untitled and add them and then title the page. But I think it's a, if I, a nice little trick too, if you're looking for a color, you can press on the color and that color reel comes up and it, it sends it over to that corner. So you can find that color again if, it, if you do lose it off your uh, color wheel. So we're going to go into the dark red here that we used originally. And I'm gonna go make sure I have my layer, my new layer, and I'm gonna give myself a circle here, hold it, and fill it. And do another one, say, right here. Hold it, and fill it. And maybe let's do one more underneath here, peeking through. Hold it. And that is a terrible circle. <laughs> there we go. Let's do that again. There we go. Okay, so now we have our, our berries here. I think I might make this guy just a little bit bigger. So let me go around him. I like to make him a bit bigger. Fill that. There we go. Okay, so we're going to repeat the process, but this time we're going to keep them just a little bit darker. So I'm only going to use the, the medium red. I'm not going to use the highlight. I'm going to go back into my airbrush. So airbrush, soft brush, and I'm going to make sure it's not too big or too small. I'm going to put a little bit of, just a little indication of light back there. I'm going to go into my smudging tool, blend it all out. Maybe go a little bit bigger on the smudging tool. There we go. So it softens a bit bigger. Not, not tons of highlight on these, just enough. Think of your light source again, where the light might hit and get caught behind the leaves and things. And now I'm going to go to my layers. I'm going to send this layer right to the back. So now there's berries in the background. Fun, right? So you can do even another layer. Bring that layer to the front. And let's do a leaf right in front here so I can show you one more step. So I'm gonna go back to my greens, my dark green. I'm gonna draw, oops, some do. Let's bring that way down because I'm not in, I'm back in airbrush. So let's go back into inking and bring it to there. 
and we're going to go and draw our leaf in front. I'm going to fill it, repeat the process, put some highlighted color in there, use my smudging tool, soften it out, and this leaf is going to sit right in front of this berry. So that's the beauty of using the layers is how it um, separates and protects the drawing underneath. I'm going to put a little bit more shading on this leaf because I think it would be in shadow here a bit more. So I add a bit, oops, hit the eraser, not the smudge. I think it will add, uh, be in a little bit more shading at the bottom here. So I'm just going to use my eraser, clean up this edge, and then let's put in our highlight veins. So we'll go back to that really minty green, light minty green, very fine line, and pull some veins out. Now I have a leaf in front. There we go. So there's our berries. Let's put um, the top of a berry. So you know how like cranberries and things like that have those little black spikes that come out. So I'm gonna put that just a little bit here. Think of the, if the berry's here, then this would be, if the stem is underneath, then the top of the berry would be here. This one's facing towards me. So it's gonna be right here. Try and blow this up so you can see it. And so this stem is hidden completely. So I'm gonna assume the top of the berry is over here. Maybe we see this one back here. And the others we won't see. I keep making marks, there we go. So now I'm gonna highlight, just give that a little bit of a highlighted reflection around here where the, where the ridge might be. I'm just gonna pop a little bit of light color around there where the light would catch that divot. Maybe just a touch on this one. And I use my blending tool again, and I just tap just to soften it. You hear me tapping away. And now my berries have little tops to them. And there you go, that's how you do the berries. So now let me show you how to move them over to the page like we did before. So we're gonna hit on our layers. We're gonna hit the top layer and gonna merge down. And we're gonna do that to all our layers. And I'm sure, like I said in the other video, there's a much faster way, but I haven't figured it out yet. I'm gonna hit the select button. I'm gonna make sure freehand is selected. I'm gonna go around my berries. And then a three fingers down, copy. Go to my gallery, hit the paper I want to put them on, three fingers down and paste. And there's my berries. So these berries, I think what we'll do is attach them to these stems and just make them really small. Kind of play with how I want them to look on here. Just really small ones like that. So I'm gonna add a couple more of these. So now I've introduced this nice red color, which I really like. I think it's uh, got a really kind of vintagey botanical theme, theme to it. Sometimes I have a hard time selecting the image to move. I don't know why, I must be missing a step. <laughs> Come on. All right, you're not working. Undo. Let's try that again. So I'm going to move it and I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to shrink it. I'm going to do everything to it. You can make them bigger or smaller. 
make sure they're attached to that stem. There we go. Deselect. Paste. Yep, I kind of have a hard time selecting it. I don't know why it does that. Something I have to practice. Make sure they're similar sizes. And maybe a couple over here. So you can see we're slowly layering and building up our paper here uh, into our own unique style. And it can match any theme and any color scheme you have going. It's a lot of fun. And just when you think, oh, I really like that, I'm done, <laughs> you, you add a new element and it takes the paper to another place. So it's, there's so much fun to these. And you can reuse these elements in other ways as well. So you can take the berries and put them on a different background. So you put that effort into drawing them and you can use the same drawn elements over and over again. I don't know why this won't let me select. But when I figure it out, I will let you know. So for anybody who uh, uses Procreate and is familiar with the program, has any suggestions on how to make uh, these types of videos and uh, the way I draw faster, please feel free to comment. I'd love to hear from you. And if you uh, like these videos, uh, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And let me know if there's anything you would like to see specifically done on this program. And I'll see if I can figure out how to do it. Come on. And... Uh, can have a lot of fun with these. So there's going to be another video on how to do a background for this paper, and then we'll print it off. And I hope you had a chance to go along with me on this one and try it yourself. I'm just going to rotate it over. It seems to want to work that way. So I must have hit a button. And it's giving me a hard time. But that's okay. We're still working. Still doing it. I'm do one more over here. So I really like this vintagey red look. I might actually show you just a quick step on how to change the background color, just so you can see how versatile this program really is. Spin this guy around real quick here. Shrink him down. So if you go to this circle, uh, sorry, this layers, at the bottom, you're gonna see the background color. If you click on the background color, uh, you can change it by sliding it around. Uh, so I just wanted to show you that really quick. So say you're doing more of like a, a really vintagey vibe feel, you can put that vintage stained looking paper color in it already, as opposed to w printing on tea dyed paper. So. So there you go, it's changed the whole mood of the picture, of the paper, just by selecting a different background color. And so you can repeat this, so you can print this color and then go in and, and say, okay, well, I really like that. Uh, maybe I can try something um, blue. And you can change it, the mood again. And it's a whole different paper than what you just printed. So very versatile program, lots of fun. I hope you join me again for uh, the next video on how we can do some of these really fun effects in the paintbrush department. So all kinds of different backgrounds we can play with. That will be next. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.